Tigers Falche. Welcome to the workshop where I will be teaching all of the parts involved in our special harp collaboration. As part of the anniversaries celebrating 90 years of the Clarsley Society and the 40th Edinburgh International Harp Festival, we decided to put together a little something special for you. As you may know, the Clarsic Society has 13 branches, including 12 all over the UK and an international wire branch. We invited each branch to volunteer a representative to record a video using the music of our society's president and one of the festival's artistic coordinators, Isabel Muris MBE. She very kindly gave us her arrangement of Rory Dahl's Port, with five parts to suit any ability, even if you've just begun playing. We also invited some of our committee members who have been heavily involved in the society and festival activities throughout the years. While it was a shame that we couldn't involve hundreds of you in this project, we are hoping that you will join us now. I'm going to go through each part individually for you and explain a bit more about the structure of this arrangement. Part one is the tune, the melody that is played from the very beginning and throughout. Now I'm going to tell you what fingering I use, but feel free to use whatever feels more comfortable to you. So I would put three, two, one on the C, D and the E, an octave above middle C. And we're going to play the third finger first, the C, followed by the D and the E. And then I would use your second finger to play the E again. So it would sound like this. After three, one, two, three. Very good. Then I would take my thumb up an octave to the C above that. And I'd put my second finger on the G, third on the F, and fourth on the E. And you're going from the top to the bottom. Let's do that again after three. One, two, three. So this phrase so far would sound like this from the C. together after three. One, two, three. And then to finish off the phrase, use your two and one on the D and E. You've played these two notes before. And you'd play the D first and then the E. Now notice how I've put my third finger onto the C. Well, that's because I'm getting ready to play those three notes again. So from the top C here, D, E, you'd go back to the C again. So that's why I'm putting my third finger on there. So now I'll play this, this whole phrase. together. One, two, three. Very good. So now it starts off the same as it did at the beginning, but it changes slightly at the end. So we start with our three, two, one on C, D, E again. Then instead of D and E, you're going to use D and C and you're going down this time. Thumb first, 
So I'll just play those two bars for you again. This is bar three and bar four. Let's play it together. One, two, three. So now I'll play all four bars and this is all of the first part. Let's try and play it together. Did you notice that I repeated it as well? So there's a repeat mark on that first line. Here we go after three, you ready? One, two, three. Now we're ready to go on to part B, the second part of the tune. We actually start off with the same three notes again. So you have your C, D and E all ready. We go up just like we did in the first part. But then we have to jump all the way down to E, uh, G sorry, and E. So you've got the three notes up here and then you jump I use my one and two to play G and then E. So I'll play it first. Let's try it with me. One, two, three. Very good. Now the next bar starts off the same, but this time you go down to F and D. So you're only one note lower down this time and I'm still using my one and two. So I'll play it first. F and D. So let's try that together. One, two, three. So now I'll play those two bars for you together. Try it. One, two, three. Very good. Now we go back to the C, D, E again and we're playing those three notes the same way. Then two strings lower, move your three, two, one onto A, B, and C. I'll just play this bar for you again. Let's try this after three. One, two, three. Very good. Then the last bar of the second part, we don't have five fingers, but we have five notes. So I group it in three and two. So we've got G, F and E, with one, two, and three. And then when we go further down, we're using one and two on the D and C, and this is our middle C. So you're going down G, F, E. If you can, cross that thumb over. If not, don't worry. You can just jump to the D and the C. So I'll do it again for you. Let's 
try that together after three. One, two, three. So these last two bars sound like this together. Shall we try it together? After three. One, two, three. Very good. I'll now play through the B part, the second part of the tune, all the way through the line. repeat it as well. Here we go after three. One, two, three. first part and the second part just very briefly just now. That's the first line, of course we would repeat it. Second line. from the beginning, C, D, E, after three, with repeats, one, two, three. So if you're choosing to play part one, you actually get to play this six times. Now what I'd like to show you is how you could divide it between the hands. So instead of playing it just in your right hand, you could divide it between the hands. So you could use your left hand, say, for the first three notes. And then your right hand could be waiting in the top. And then you take the D, E with your left. So that's how you could divide the first part. part 
you would take the C, D, E with your right hand and you would have your left hand free to play the G and E or the F and D down here, like this. Then you could do the C, D, E again with the right, take the A, B, C with the left, and then G, F, E with the right, and the last two notes with your left. So it's entirely possible to divide the whole tune between the two hands, if you so wish. Part two is perfect if you have just started playing the harp. It's octaves in the bass clef, and you can divide it between two fingers. I'll just show you very briefly with my left hand, first of all, so you can see what the notes are. We use the octave um, C from middle C to your first bass C. Now we count up to six. If you go into thinking quavers, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six. And again, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you move down to the G. So that's your notes. If you wanted to divide them between the two hands, then you'd put a right hand on middle C and your left hand the octave above, uh, below, sorry. <laughs> so C, two, three, four, five, six. So you divide it between the hands if you were just playing part two. But when this part gets added in the arrangement, there's the option of playing these octaves with the right hand tune. So it would sound like this. So now let's give that a go. If you're just trying the left hand on its own, brilliant. If you want to try putting the right hand in with it, let's go for it as well. After three. One, two, three. That's the first line, the first part of uh, part two. <laughs> then we go down a further octave, if you've got that many strings, if you've got the bottom C. If not, don't worry, just stay up here. But down the octave C, we have a very nice low C sound. And we play that again after six beats. Then we have another C quickly followed by the F. So we go one, two, three, one, two, three. And then you're finishing off with a final G. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'll just show you just now how it would work between the hands. So if you've got your right hand down here and your left hand all the way down there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Again. Again, then up to the F, and then your final G. Now with the tune, it starts on every, uh, the beginning of every bar. So 
whether you're adding it with the tune or just on its own, why don't we try it together now? So, up to C down the bass. Ready after three. One, two, three. C. And C again. One more C. Up to the F. And your G. Let's do that again. Repeat back down to C. So as I said before, it's entirely possible, if you don't have that bottom C, you can actually play the C up here. And it does work with two hands as well. You just go down to the F and the G. So whatever works for you. The third harp part is pretty much the same as putting the octaves, the part two, with the melody part one, but the left hand is more developed. So I'll just show you the left hand first. Just like we did in part two, when we start with the octave C, instead of counting to six beats, we actually only count to three, and then we go further up using two and one, to E and G above the octave. So this is in the treble range. So we play an octave C, one, two, three, E and G, two, three. Same thing for the second bar, we do an octave C, and then this time it's D and F. The third bar is that C again, and then the E and G, and then you go further down to the G, like you did in part two, and then you play B and D. Okay, so now let's try playing each of those bars together. Let's try the first one. So that's your C octave and the E and G. Are you ready? After three. One, two, three. Great, let's try the next bar. Remember, you go down to D, F that this time. One, two, three, C octave, D and F. Very good. Next bar, after three, back to the C octave again. One, two, three, then E and G. Very good. Now we go down to the G and we play this octave first. One, two, three, then the B and D. Okay, so together, one, two, three, G, two, three, B and D. Let's try that whole line. After three. One, two, three. C octave, B and G. Back to C octave again. D and F. Back to C octave. E and G. And your G at the bottom. Repeat, C octave again, E, G, back to C octave, D, F, and the octave again, E, G, down to your G octave, and the B, D. Very good. So if you're putting the two hands together, it would sound like this. Ready to try it with me? Either just the left hand or try hands together maybe. After three. One, two, three.
repeat. Now the second half of this part three is very similar. We've got our octave C down the bass, really down the bass this time. But remember, if you need to, um, you could play it up the octave. But down here initially, we've got the C octave first, and then E and G. You've probably guessed it. C octave again, and the D F. So that's the same as we had up here when we played. Yeah, we're just down a whole octave. Then the next bar is identical to what we played in the second heart part, octave C, octave F. So that hasn't changed. Then we play an octave C, uh, octave G, sorry. And then your B and D. So that's the same as previous line. So let's try that together and if you want to divide it between the hands then you could take the C octave with your left hand and you could take the third with your right perhaps. So you see you don't have to do any particular form of each part, you could mix and match. Okay so let's try um, together playing through the second part of uh, of this heart part. Okay, so C uh, octave to begin with. One, two, three. E and G. Back to C octave. D and F. C octave. F octave. G octave. And then the B and D. So let's try this maybe hands together after three okay here we go if you just want to play the left hand that's fine but here we are hands together one two three A little problem around that last B and D. When you put it hands together you have to decide which hand is going to play the D. Personally I would keep it in the right hand because that's the tune, that's the melody. So if you're just going to play them hands together at that point just use the B with your second finger because you get the same effect. So if you're just going to do the left hand on its own, then you can play B and D, no problem. But hands together, they clash. Okay, so now let's try playing through the whole of harp part three. Do you remember how it went? Back with the tune in the right hand and your octave C in the left hand. Here we go after three. One, two, three.
is block chords. It's written as block chords, but you could arpeggiate them if you wanted. So what I mean by a block chord is when you play all the notes together at the same time. But if you want to arpeggiate them, roll or spread them, you could do that. So we start off with an open C in your left hand, which is C, G, C, the octaves with the fifth in the middle, and a first inversion of the C chord, E, G and C in the right hand. So I'm gonna play them as a block chord. So now um, we'd go up to a C tonic triad in both hands up here. So we'd move from the first chord, open C, first inversion C, to two tonic triads of C. Then we're moving down to the second inversion of C, in both hands, and then the G tonic triad in both hands. So here's these four cards again. We've got C open and the first inversion C, two C tonic triads, second inversion C in both hands, two tonic G triads in both hands, Okay, if you're keeping up with me. We've then got the same thing again. Open C in the left, first in the right. And then two tonic triads up here. The two second inversion. And then the two tonic Gs. So here we go. This is the first part of heart part number four. or rolled arpeggiated. One, two, three. of this, part B of heart part number four, <laughs> you start off with a low C octave and then you're up back to the C tonic triad, then you're back down to the C octave again and this time it's a second inversion of a D minor, so that's A, D and F in both hands. So let's do that again. We've got the C octave first, and then A, D, F, which is a second inversion D minor. So let's play those two bars together. One, two, three. C octave, C tonic triad, C octave, D minor second inversion. Very good. The next bar goes back to a C octave again, now this time it's an F major first inversion, but really all that's changed between the last chord that you played and this one is that middle note. The middle note is no longer a D, it's now a C. So it's A, C and F. So you go C octave first, then A, C, F in both hands. Then we're doing a second inversion of a C chord, so that's G, C, E, in both hands. And then it's only the tonic triad in the right hand and an octave in your left hand for the very, very last chord. So that last bar is second inversion C and then 
G tonic in the right, G octave in the left. So I'll just go over the last two bars there. We had a C octave first, then the first inversion of the F major, then the second inversion of the C major, and then your G major tonic with the G octave in the left hand. I'll just play through those four bars again for you. Are you ready to maybe try it together with me? After three. One, two, three. C octave, C tonic triad, back to C octave. D minor second inversion, C octave again, F major first inversion, C second inversion, and then your G tonic with your G octave. Let's do it again, C octave, C triads, C octave, D minor second inversion, C octave again, F major first inversion, C second inversion and then your G tonic with the octave. Okay, let's try the whole part now. That's an awful lot of chords. Okay, here we go from the very first C open and your first inversion C after three. One, two, three. comes in on the fourth time of the tune. So hopefully that's quite easy to remember. First part is part one, or the first time through is part one. Second time through you add in part two, whether that's just your left hand or together with the tune. Third time through is the third part and that's with the developed left hand. Fourth time through you can play these chords. So if you are going to play this part, you have to wait until the fourth time through of the whole piece. Of course, you could play the other parts first. You could even do them in order. You could play part one, part two, part three, part four. Anything goes. And now the final part, part five. So for this one, again, it's personal preference, but on the music, Isabel has indicated and I agree with her that you should use your left hand for the top, uh, the top chord, your right hand for the middle, and then you bring your left hand down for the bottom note. I'll play it to you first so you can see how it works. So that's the first line of part five. So what we have is a second inversion C right at the top of your harp in both hands. So left hand above your right hand and then you bring your left hand down to play the middle C. So it's E, C and G up at the top here. E, C and G in the middle. And then middle C. So like we were thinking before in six beats in the bar, one, two, three, 
four, five, six. These are now semi quavers. One and two and three and four, five, six. So that's how that works. Let's give it a try after three. One, two, three. good. The second bar is exactly the same up here in terms of your chords, but this time it's a D at the bottom. That's all that changes. So the whole way through this line it just goes between a C at the bottom and a D at the bottom. And then again C and back to D. At this point we would repeat. So why don't we try it together? One, two, three. One, and two, and three, and four, five, six. One, and two, and three, and D, five, six. One, and two, and three, and C. Repeat. part you do two of those bars again so you're playing the two second inversion C chords and then a C at the bottom and a D at the bottom. Now this next bar you're playing those two chords again but you're not going to be putting your left hand down to play a middle C. Instead you're going to be going further up to play in a first inversion F chord and that's your F, C and A and you would mirror it in your right hand as well, F, C and A. So the bar sounds like this. So you just keep your hands in position. So we have E, C, G in both hands, F, C, A in both hands. Let's try that together. One, two, three. E, C, G, F, C, A. Let's try it again. One, two, three. Keep your hand, you keep both your hands, sorry, where they are because you're now going to be playing a first inversion C chord. So it's C, G and E in both hands. Again, left hand above the right. Then bring your left hand down to an open G. So that's G, D and G. And a B triad in the right hand, B, D, F. So that makes a G7 chord and you play your G at the bottom first. So that's just the one note. And then you play everything else as a block chord. Or arpeggiate it if you want to. There we go. So that last bar, remember you've got your left hand above your right hand. First inversion C chord, which is C, G, E, C, G, E, G at the bottom and the seven. So let me play through the B part now of uh, this fifth heart part. So let's try it together. Second inversion C in both hands and you're going to be making that left hand move. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. And again, with the D at the bottom. Now one of these again, and then you're going up to your first F, then your first C, and the 
G7. Let's do it all again. trying harp part five this only comes in on the first uh, fifth time through the whole piece so it's just this one time so let's now go from the beginning of the fifth part so second uh, second inversion C in your left second inversion C in the right and we're going all the way down to the C down here one two three to the C and the D. Repeat. C. And D. Down to C. And D. Now it's the B part. After the heart part five comes in, you've got one more time through the whole tune. So if you're going to play part five, you may as well learn another part as well. Part one comes back again. So straight after playing, it would go back to the tune. But it's completely up to you. Now we've come to the sixth time through the tune and this is where the part one comes back again on its own, nothing else along with it. And the only difference here is how we end the whole arrangement. So we go through the whole tune like this So I did slow down there, but in the collaboration, we don't actually slow down at all. So um, what happens is the last couple of bars sound like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, finish. So the only difference between the first five times through, if you're going to play this um, part one the whole way, whole way through, then you'll play it for five times with this ending and then go straight back to the first time. But on the last time, the sixth time through, you're going one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then that's the end. Okay, so I'll play through the B part so you can hear uh, the, like the first time through it and then the very, very last time.
And that's all five parts of Isabel's arrangement covered. Please do download the music, which will make everything a whole lot clearer. The most important part of this collaboration has been to showcase the society and the festival that it organises with its wide range of ages, abilities, our geographical areas and of course to have fun! The best part of the festival being online again this year is that you can join in from any part of the world and our society would welcome anyone to join any of our branches, especially during this time when most of our work is happening online anyway. So please consider joining the society and becoming part of our wonderful Clarshoch community by spreading the harp love. Before I go, I'd like to say a big thank you to all of the contributors to our harp video collaboration. And I do hope that you all have the best time in joining with us. Thank you so much to the Harp Festival and of course to the Society for organising yet another wonderful Harp Festival. Marshall Live in Draste. Bye for now.